Hello and welcome everybody. If you've clicked on this video, it means you're asking me the one question I hear more than any other. How is it that I can increase my club head speed for golf? Well, before we jump into that, I want to let you know that I'm the digital golf guy. I'm a researcher, educator, licensed physical therapist, and strength and performance coach. And I spend all my time helping golfers optimize their performance and avoid getting injured. So, Although there are a lot of ways to increase your club head speed, getting fitted for new clubs, taking lessons, working on technique, or just getting stronger and more mobile, I particularly focus on one of those, and that's that strength and mobility spectrum. What's really cool is we actually have research that tells us how amateurs generate club head speed. You did hear that correctly. There are literally people out there whose job is to conduct research on making golfers better. And the first and foremost person that comes to my mind with that is one Sasha McKenzie. He performed a research study and it found that golfers develop speed in two primary ways. I'm going to teach you both of those ways so you can implement them into your golf game and practice. The first way to increase club head speed is to increase your hand path. Hand path is the distance from your hands at the top of the backswing to the golf ball. You could take a picture and draw a straight line, and that's your hand path. So you can think of it like a runway, and the longer that is, the more speed you can develop. And the reason is acceleration. So to use an analogy, take a car, and I'm going to tell you what I need you to do is to put that car at maximum speed. And the two options for you are to use a 50-yard track or runway or a 100-yard runway. And whatever the top speed is, that's the option that wins. I'm very confident you're going to say the 100-yard runway because it gives you twice as much time to accelerate to your maximum speed. And when this is simplified to a physics equation, your golf swing is no different. Increase hand path longer time to generate speed, higher club head speed. And again, that was shown in an official research study by a, biome a biomechanist named Sasha McKenzie. The second thing this research study found about increasing club head speed was the amount of force that you pulled down on the club with. So essentially, how much force can you exert throughout your entire body to yank that club down toward the ball? Now, I know some of you may think, that all you need to do now is go out and focus on ripping your hands down as fast as possible and you're going to increase your club head speed. While that may be true if you're able to keep all parameters equal, it doesn't mean you neglect the rest of your body. In fact, the best way to generate club head speed is really through how far how hard your legs push into the ground. So when you drive into the ground and create that rotation at your hips, that actually changes the force of which you pull your arms down. So if you can time and sequence these things correctly to drive from your hips, use your abdominals, the rest of your core muscles, and the muscles of your arm to yank down, that's how you're going to get maximum force pulled through the club and maximum club head speed. After covering these two things with golfers, they usually look at me and say, what the heck am I supposed to do with that? How can I apply this and actually increase my club head speed? Which is why I'm going to end this video by showing you five different tests you can do to find out if you're limiting your maximum club head speed through a lack of mobility to get in the position or a lack of force production to pull down as hard as you need to. About this time into the explanation, I start getting looks and questions like, okay, great information, but what should I do with it? And I'm glad you asked because I want to end this video by showing you five tests you can do to find out if you're limiting your club head speed through one of these two factors. Some of these tests will be, do you have enough mobility to get in the position of a nice long runway or hand path? And the other test you're going to look at, do you have enough strength to pull down with a lot of force once you've reached that position? So I'm going to walk you through one of those. I want you to stick with the details. You should be able to test these all at home. Some of them might be easier with a partner. 
But as soon as you find that you have a certain deficit, you want to work on that. And then as you, once you improve it, your ability to increase club head speed is going to go up. This stuff works. I cannot emphasize enough. This stuff works. I've had division one golfers, professional golfers, high schools, amateurs just playing for fun, implement exercises to target these deficits and see their club head speed higher after a week or two. So let's jump into these tests. And then once you know what your deficits are, check out some of my other videos because I teach you how to fix them. Test number one is going to be for lower body strength. It's very important in the golf swing that you can create ground reaction force by pushing off the ground and leverage that to turn it into rotational velocity or speed. I have a simple test for this that anyone can do at home with either no or minimal equipment. It's simply going to be a split squat isometric hold. To perform this test, you're going to put one foot out front and one foot behind. You want to squat down until your thigh is parallel to the ground. I like to set something on there like a book or a weight to confirm that it's parallel because if I come up too high, it'll slide off. We want to maintain that parallel position for 20 seconds. That's a good amount of leg strength. 30 seconds, you're doing great and you clear this with flying colors. Now, the test can be hard. You can really struggle to get to 20 seconds, but as long as you can cross out that you're able to complete it, then you can give yourself a passing score for that test. Again, this is a split squat for leg strength that we can apply during the golf swing. The second test I'll give golfers to see if they have the ability to get into the right positions is multi-segmental rotation. Instead of trying to tease out the difference between rotation at the hips, the back and the shoulders, which definitely has a time and place. I'm going to combine those all together because it gives me a very quick look if the athlete has what I need to work with to complete that swing or whether we need to dig deeper into it. For multi-segmental rotation, you're going to put your feet together. I like to take a club and put it on my shoulders to use as a visual. And then I'm going to rotate as far as I can without my feet coming off the ground. The goal here is to achieve 90 total degrees of rotation. So when we're talking about the backswing and getting into our top position, we're looking at every professional golfer having much more than 90 degrees. So even amateurs that want to maximize their potential should be able to get to 90 degrees. This is a great one to film yourself, especially if you have the visual aid, because you'll be able to see if that gets all the way around to 90, if you're short, or maybe you're way beyond. Again, this is the multi-segmental rotation test to see if you have enough rotation to get to the top of the golf swing. The third test we're going to complete is for a wrist hinge. If you're a golfer, I don't have to spend a long time telling you because you probably already know that the golf swing requires a certain amount of wrist hinge ability to create lag in the club and maximize club head speed. I have a very simple test for this. You're going to take a 7-iron because it's going to have the type of lie angle we need. And you're going to set the club on the ground so this, this flat surface is flat on the ground. So we don't want it tilted one way or the other. And you're going to see some type of natural angle that the shaft sits. You're simply going to place your hand on the club. And you're going to hinge up without moving anything else, so just the wrist joint. You don't want to move your shoulder or your elbow. We want to isolate the movement to the wrist. And as long as when we isolate this movement, we can get the shaft to reach parallel to the ground, we clear that test, and we likely have all the wrist mobility that's needed to perform a proper wrist hinge. Don't forget, you do want to complete this on both sides of your body, as they are both required to hinge in the golf swing. The next test we want to complete to see if we have the ability to move through the golf swing correctly is for shoulder mobility specifically shoulder external rotation. When we go to the top of the backswing, this is called shoulder external rotation. It's a very simple test. All you have to do is stand straight up and down, bring your arm out to the side so that your elbow is at the same height as your shoulder, and you're going to rotate back, and we're looking for the forearm to become perpendicular to the ground. If we are short, we probably have difficulty getting to the very top of the backswing. If we have excess, that just means we have a little bit more room to play with, but it does mean we need to make sure that we have the shoulder stability to control that extra range of motion 
so we don't end up with an injury from that. The fifth and final test is for core strength and stability. This is far and away the area I get the most questions about in my profession when I'm working with golfers. So I make sure to pay attention here. What we want to do is see the strength of our abs and our oblique muscles. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up in a traditional plank position. We'll put our forearms down. We want to make sure our elbow is directly under our shoulder. And then we're going to lift our hips off the ground. And you want a relatively straight line down your entire body. If your hips dip, I would consider that a failure. If your hips get too high, I would also consider that a failure of the test. You want to maintain right in this position with a good ab and glute contraction for 30 seconds. If you're unable to maintain that position, it makes it really hard to complete the golf swing and compress your spine at the finish. If you watch slow motion golf swings, what you'll see is this position at impact and that spine is here supported, ready to create power and take the impact. And that's why it's so important to make sure we have optimal core strength and stability. That's going to do it for my five favorite quick, easy tests to see if you have the physical capabilities to make the golf swing you need to make. If you passed all these tests, awesome. You're doing great. And you can most likely spend most of your time focused on technique, getting a little bit stronger, and dialing other parts of your game. If you missed even one of these tests, I really suggest you figure out how to address that deficiency. Because the golf swing is such a full body movement and requires every segment start to finish, if you have a deficit in one area, it often carries over into other areas. Where you make an adjustment because you lack shoulder mobility, for example, and that adjustment might result in back pain, it might result in inconsistent swing, it might result in a whole lot of things you don't want. So I really suggest you iron out the deficiencies as fast as you can. Now on my YouTube page at the Digital Golf Doc, I have tons of exercises and videos for every one of the deficiencies I covered. So feel free to take a look there as you look for resources to improve your golf game. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below this video. You can also feel free to email me questions or if you want me to take a look at your assessment on video, I can help point out some things you might be missing. If you want to do that, just send me an email at digitalgolfdoc at gmail.com. I thank you for spending some time to me with some time with me today. I hope you have your best golf season yet. Thanks.